tonight. Let's talk about everybody's favorite fat bottomed squirrel, the unbeatable squirrel girl, issue 43. Legacy, I think it's Legacy 53 or 55 because they did renumber this after a year. 55. I don't know much about this character, but when I saw the War of Realms tie-in, I thought it would be the perfect time to start reading Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. I've read her in the Marvel team-up, Marvel Rising, with Ms. Marvel, and I know she was the babysitter of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones back when Bendis was writing New Avengers. I remember her from that. And man, the other time I read her was in the 198 files when they were doing uh, the After House of M, The Decimation, when they did that little thing. I read that on my Marvel Unlimited apps. Don't know anything about Doreen Green, really. I mean, I'm watching that cartoon animated series. Uh, I did read The War of Realms right before I, well, I read this one. I read War of Realms beginning to end. As far as that goes, it's only natural I explain my plateau and also what defines my name. Chillmonger, I do review comics and I do review movies comic book related movies, but that's uh, again, not an unbeatable Squirrel Girl fan. That being said, let's get started. I wrote notes. The beginning part where it was of uh, words and words and words. As a comic book fan, we like pictures, love them. And when we get that, it's like a downer. But because it was formatted in Twitter, when she was talking to Tony Stark in that way, man, I can't believe you even used Trill. I can't believe that you talk about money that much. Like, it was great, felt like Twitter, awesome. Ryan, what's the dude's name, North? The writer of this comic book does a damn good... Where were they? Ryan North. Good job. Art, it's supposed to be what it is. I don't even think they had a color artist on this book. But it's supposed to be kind of lame. The next part of the book is when they jump into the digital world. It felt like an episode of Digimon. They went into the negative zone. That is crazy because I got a notification on the computer that said... Comic Book University has reviewed Unbeatable Squirrel Girl 43. So be sure to check that video out after I post this one. I'll leave a link. But uh, the uh, digital world felt really cool how they went into the negative zone. And I was counting pages. I'm like, okay, the book is called War of Rumps tie-in. I need, like, I was upset. I was really mad. And I was like, there better be... And the next page was the War of Rumps tie-in, like, right, right into it. So they just needed a reason, a reason to exclude her main cast of characters so that they can do this and I was like very good job this book is not disappointing so far I'm just like I'm cheering for it and um, when we, once we see the graphics there of the war of Rome, she's talking to Loki and right behind you got Black Panther, Spider-Man and Iron Man and the, because of the art it felt more like the scrimmish of realms it just was so fun and cool although it was meaningful it was a tie-in no doubt this is the conversation Loki is having with her right before his part in the War of Realms actual issue number one. So I felt like, hey, this is serving a purpose. Now Loki talks to her and gives her a mission. She tells her that Earth's been divided. North America is here, has the Frost Giants. Uh, in the South, Antarctica, that was still Savage Land. That was uh, belonging to Roxxon. Regardless, giving me context to some of the story of War of Realms, I didn't pick this up in issue number one of War of Realms. And maybe this will be just like a good pick-me-up, a nugget of information that we, the readers of Squirrel Girl, we get to read. So that's cool. It makes it feel meaningful. So she does convince, he does convince her to go over to, uh, to Canada, which is a large place. He doesn't have his fingers crossed as the art identified, which is really cool. And there's also another part in this book when they say the dates of a time. What, what's the date? And uh, it's covered in a text box. And they joke that this is not an art bug. This is us taking care of the reader needs to be able to read this 10 years from now. I should probably explain the sliding timeline theory. If that Captain America came out of ice 10 years ago, Spider-Man was bit when he was a teenager 10 years ago. So everything that happened in Marvel, even the books written in 1963, have happened 10 years ago. And we just pretend that's how it works. So when you write the dates in a comic book, it really kind of ruins that aspect of it. Now, the Frost Giants are up in Canada, and Squirrel Girl has her go at them. They milk the aspect of the suspense turning page to page, which I love, and they, but they called extra, extra attention to it. I, at this point, I understand why this book continues, even though those sales are lower than some of the main, any other title with frickin' 43 issues, it, or 55 issues, like I said, any other title. This is just different. I can imagine that the CEO of Marvel is like, loves this comic book. You're like, yeah, give it to me, okay. Who's writing it? Ryan Smith. Like, this is one of those that 
if this is making me happy, I'm just going to continue this even though it's not taking that much money. You know it doesn't have a color artist, right? Does it really not have a color artist? It does, Rico Renzi. Still, it just doesn't feel like it's a book that's too expensive and, and takes too much thought. And maybe that might be disrespectful to the artist. I'm sorry if it is, but I feel like this is simple and it's worth the money and it's cost efficient and, and it's entertaining it's different. It's unique from other kind of art. So I liked how they were... Uh, the suspenseful ter page turn, though, was to show us that there was an Oak Tree Ultron. News to me, but okay, it works. Next part of the book, it goes to her parents. They give her a new suit, Squirrel Girl suit. The writers jokes about how there were emails being sent to the editor of whether or not the suit should cover the fur on the tail, but it's insulation or it's not. Okay, I mean, that's what the bottom of the pages of Squirrel Girl is, and again, that's what makes it unique and that's what makes it worth it. So it's a new costume. They travel over back to the Frost Giants, and it took a while. Very funny, very comical. When we get to the Frost Giants, this, this, this was batting a thousand. This was a great comic until they named the Frost Giants Gary and Danielle. That's a no-no, man. They can't be having Earth names for the sake of a joke. I love jokes. I, I enjoy jokes. But just like I did in my Shazam review, which is something you should check out also, I don't like when they make jokes that ruin the mystique, the story. Um, I'm invested, but the joke took me right out of everything. For example, and this ain't a major spoiler for Shazam. Shazam hits his head on the train, as he learns he's, he's taller than what he usually is. Hits his head on the train, oh. But Shazam is a superpower who can take bullets to the face and stuff. Why is he acting like that hurt me? You know, just for the sake of a joke, we, we wouldn't sacrifice. So they named Gary and Danielle the Frost Giants. And don't give me that, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Maybe the we Earth people from Midgard got the names from that, and I don't want to hear it. The last part of the book was a reveal of a character I'm not familiar with, Ratatosker. It's like a gossip squirrel, it's fiery. And that was that. The next issue is also a War of Realms tie-in, according to the website I checked out right as soon as I finished reading this comic. And I'm going to pick it up. So they sold me on that. Ryan North... You did a good, damn good job. Artist, you did a good job. Your last name is Charm. And so did the color artist. Like, you guys did your thing. It was, it was different, unique, and it's the Squirrel Girl experience that I got. I'm happy that I got to do this review because I don't read Squirrel Girl. But I'll read the next one, like I said. A big thank you for watching the channel. Leave a thumbs up. And I said I would direct you to this video, so go check him out. Professor Chill, Comic Book College. Class dismissed. <laughs>